Welcome back to the Basic Beginners FreeCAD course for FreeCAD version 1. In the previous lesson, you were introduced to the concept of revolves. In this tutorial, we'll expand on that knowledge by modeling a subject that may appear complex, but can actually be simplified and constructed using revolve and the groove operation. Applying these operations at both full 360 degrees rotations and partial angles. By examining the provided technical drawing, you'll notice that although the subject looks complex, its top view simplifies down to a circle. This is the key insight. If we imagine the subject as a silhouette, it hides the voids, and we can see that the base geometry can indeed be created with a revolve. After, we will refine the model by adding the subtractive features, such as the cutouts visible in the side profiles. By the end of this lesson, you will not only understand how to create a revolve-based subject in FreeCAD, but also develop skills for breaking down seemingly complex designs into manageable steps. If you like what you see and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G-0 or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. So I'm in FreeCAD, that starts a new document. I'm in the part design workbench already in there. And I'm going to create a new body. Notice the body is in bold, so it's active. So when I create a new sketch, going to be placed inside that body. We're looking to revolve a quarter section of the subject. And that quarter section is on the side plane. So we match that in our digital space, our 3D view. And look in the height of our subject, it's around 30 millimeters. So we can come down to the bottom and look at the X and Y millimeters of the 3D view, the scaling. And then adjust our 3D view by zooming in or out to better suit our required dimensions. We can see them change down the bottom. And I can start using the polyline to create the cross section. I'm going to use the coordinates by the side of the mouse pointer. Now remember that we've got X that runs this way, Y that runs this way. And you notice as we move up, we're going to the positive Y, negative Y, negative X, and positive X. For the revolve, we need a profile that sits to the side of one of these axes. The subject's 30 millimeters high, symmetrical to the horizontal axis. Let's come up around about 15 millimeters, around about here, it doesn't have to be exact, because we're going to be using constraints, and come out around about five mil. We click once to add the first point of our polyline, and we come across. Now notice we're getting a horizontal constraint, and this is because if I look at my drop down, I've got the auto constraints and the auto remove redundance checked. Let's click the drop down again and move along around about 10 millimeters. We have a horizontal constraint. Next, we come down around about five millimeters, about here, and drop another along about two, down around about five. And remember that if we miss a constraint, so we want a horizontal constraint, so you can see that's coming in here. If we move slightly, it disappears. So I'm just going to drop this line in. We need to know the constraints later. Let's drop down around about 10 millimeters and repeat the shape using the left mouse button to add our points. I'm going to move around about 10 millimeters this way and then come across diagonally, come up, and then we're going to connect up to this point here. Now, this will create a closed wire. If I miss and drop it down here, don't worry. We just need to right click to cancel the tool we're still in polyline mode, and then right click again to get the mouse points back. I can then take these two points, select them, or if I click again, we can click and hold and box select them from the top to the bottom and use the Quinston constraint. Next step is to clean up the constraint. So we've got this one here. So I'm going to use the combined horizontal and vertical constraint and select this one and move our way down. And I can see everything's okay. Let's right click to cancel. I start adding the constraints. We're using the dimensioning tool, or we can get to the dimensioning tool by right clicking, coming down to dimension, and use dimension. Let's first constrain this point here by clicking on it. 
we automatically get a constraint going from this point to the center, which is what we want. If I come up and move across, we get the horizontal constraint, drop that in and set this one to five millimeters. This is our opening. Our next one is going to be this one. Drop this in. Again, we want a horizontal constraint. This one's going to be eight mil. I set this line length to 10 millimeters. You notice this is pulled it this way and we need to set the constraint here. So if I zoom in, you can see this has moved over. Let's right click to cancel and just neaten this up a bit. So take in this point, let's move it this way. So we know these are going to be in line. Let's just pull this out a bit and pull this one in. So just take your time when constraining. So now we've got these in position. Let's make sure nothing's selected. And that's set all of these, all these lines here to be equal. And we want to do the same with these two and these two. Make all those equal. Make sure nothing's selected. Use the dimensioning tool. And we'll set some dimensions. So I'm going to take this one here and drop this in as two millimeters. Hit OK. And also, I'm going to set this length here as five millimeters. Right click to cancel. Let's zoom in and neaten these up a bit. We have some more quality constraints that we can add. So let's take these two lines, make those equal. And also these two diagonal lines and make those equal as well. Our degrees of freedom are starting to lower. Let's zoom in slightly. I'm going to set a length between these two points. So we're spanning all of this geometry here and setting the length just with the two points. Selected them first this time and dropped in the constraint via the dimension tool. Let's set that to 30. We've now got two degrees of freedom. I'm going to right click to cancel, and take some geometry and just drag it slightly. So you can see we can move along the Y axis here. We need to make the sketch symmetrical to the horizontal axis. To do that, we use a symmetry constraint, taking one point, selecting the other point, and then the edge or the point and we want to place in the center and we use the constraint symmetric. We have one degree of freedom. And if I click on that, you can see all of these points have been highlighted here. So we've got some movement in here somewhere. You can see we need to constrain this. To do that, we can see that these points need to be in line. Because we've got symmetry, I just need to take this point and this one and apply a horizontal constraint that locks this point down and in turn, this one can't move. We've completed our side profile. Now I can close and I'm going to use the home key just to bring our sketch into view. I select the sketch and add a revolve operation. Now what will happen if I come out to view and come down to toggle axis cross, you can see our global axes sit here. So we'll want to revolve around the Z. Take the sketch and use a revolve operation. Now don't worry if this has been placed over this side, we just move the screen and center our view. Or you can use the fit all. We can see it's been revolved around the vertical sketch axis. So if we remember back to our sketch, it's in 2D and the sketch sits as a cross section. Let's create this revolve. So the vertical sketch axis is fine or we can use the base Z axis. And you can see that one there. Angles 360, which is okay. Let's hit okay. And we've created our first operation. We're going to remove a wedge shaped section from the top and bottom using the subtractive version of the revolve known as a groove. To do this is going to be on the same plane. Let's make sure nothing's selected. We can see the body is active, it's in bold. And we'll create a new sketch. We zoom in, we can see we need the XZ plane. Let's click that. If I rotate my view, we can see the sketch has been placed on the XZ plane. 
which runs through the object. We can't see inside at the moment, and this is where the view section comes in handy. Or if we right click and we can select view section. This section's through the object, so we can see inside it. As we move to one side of the plane, one side will be hidden whilst the other side is shown. The same if we move back. Let's use the view sketch icon, which is the same as our front view. To remove the material, we're going to make a profile using a rectangle. Let's click and drop a rectangle in. Let's right click to cancel the tool and use a dimensioning tool. Place a horizontal dimension of 15 millimeters and hit OK. Right click to cancel. Let's take the top and side. Those two edges make them equal. So we have a square and we want to remove this section here of the subject behind. So when we revolve with this using the subtractive groove, it will remove material in the shape of this profile. So I'll remove anything within this square. I'm going to take this point and the vertical axis and use a coincident constraint to place a point on object constraint. I'm then going to take this point and this point, the center point, and set some distance between those. Let's say around five millimeters. So if we look, the material is going to be removed from inside here. Now, if you're left with material on the outside after the subtractive operation, the groove, then all we need to do, that's right click, is just to set this millimeters to a little bit more, something like 16 millimeters. That just brings it slightly out. I want to do the same on this side as well. So we don't need two operations. All we do is create another rectangle down here. And when this is revolved around this way, this rectangle will remove material in this direction and this one in this direction. We can place a rectangle in here, or if I click and hold and create a selection around all of these edges, I can use the mirroring tool. Now the mirroring tool will be up here somewhere, but we may have to rearrange our toolbars. So this drop down here, you can see the mirroring tool here. If you can't find it, then just right click and come down to symmetry. After I've clicked that, if I start moving my mouse pointer, we can see the symmetry icon by the side of the mouse. And as I touch these edges, we can see that symmetry kicking in. So if I hover over the center point, we can see the symmetry we need. Now, before we drop it, look to the left and we've got create symmetry constraint. Let's check that. So when we hover over this point now and click, the constraints have been added and we have a fully constrained sketch with this shape copied symmetrically to the center point. Let's close now and add our final operation. So let's zoom out slightly make sure the sketch is selected. And this time we're going to use this operation here, the groove operation. We click that and it looks a bit odd at the moment because we're going 360 degrees. We need to change this to 70 degrees and we click off. And we have our groove, which we can hit OK. We have our finished model and we'll use both additive revolve and a subtractive revolve known as a groove. So I hope that's helped you with the revolve operation and I look forward to seeing you in our next lesson. If you like what you've seen and you want to donate to the channel, then you can do so via Ko-Fi or Coffee at ko-fi.com forward slash M-A-N-G zero or via PayPal at paypal.com forward slash PayPal me forward slash Darren B. E. Stone. I also run a Patreon where you can get early access and additional content. And that's at patreon.com forward slash mango jelly solutions. Links can be found in the channel header on the about page or in the descriptions of these videos. I thank everybody that's donated so far. It really helps to keep the lights on so I can produce more content and also expand the channel. Thank you for liking, commenting and subscribing to these videos. And I hope to see you again in the next one.